there friends welcome to episode number 169 of it'll be fine i'm your friend and your pal kelly zemnikas coming to you from times square this is not a fancy zoom background i'm i'm legit in times square hey clifford the big red dog is coming soon yay um and hey today we are doing a food chat i am super happy to welcome from the state of texas the awesomeness that is simply Courtney. I'm gonna head back to the hotel. We're gonna talk food, we're gonna talk family, we're gonna talk COVID times. Guys, it's gonna be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. I don't know if he's married or if he was on his way to getting married, but either way, by the time this comes out, he should be married by now. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. Uh, but he realized that, you know, going through the whole process of being, um, I guess, engaged and having to work on stuff, it was the coolest thing because he was like, okay, I can stay home, get in my time with my mm -hmm. family, and I can still work on, you know, material. And I was like, yeah, man, that's the good thing about this online stuff is you can travel, go do shows, you can uh, interview, you can do podcasts, et cetera, and yeah. not leave your home. And, you know, your wife lives still on the couch next to you. So Exactly. I, you don't know I, what's going on behind this background. We so. don't know. Okay. <laughs> Listen, Kelly just pointed out, we don't know what's going on in the background. But it I might not the, even be in the background. <laughs> what I love the most about this is that it looks like I'm leaning on the couch. Oh, nice. I it's like how you're doing that. I like that. Dang, you could zoom in. You could zoom in and make it like you're really sitting on the couch, and I would have believed you. <laughs> I like the sweater, by the way, to Marge Simpson. That is dope. Thank you so much. It, this Marge, is one of my favorites. I don't think Marge gets enough love and just everything. People are always like Bart. Absolutely. I think Bart's the number one go to. Amazingly, I think Millhouse is number two. Everybody always mentions Millhouse yeah. and then all the ancillary yeah. characters or whatever, but nobody ever talks about Marge, who is the freaking glue of the damn show and the universe. I think she's the glue of the Simpsons it's, universe because it feels like she's the only, like, everything yeah. can go crazy and Marge keeps it together. When Marge goes crazy, everything goes crazy. Yeah. I mean, the woman can rock this hairdo, so she can do anything. I'm telling you, and it still rocks. That is that is current every year that it has existed. That's like, yeah, I can see somebody <laughs> making that work. About uh, about doing stand up, um, I always like. I'm never hungry before a set. I'm always like ravenous after a set. Yeah. Um, for me, my go to is always like pizza or popcorn or a okay. hot dog. Like typical, like ballpark uh -huh. you know, kind of set. What's what's your go to post show? What would we find you? noshing on at the bar after the show okay so it's at the bar i was gonna ask you is, do i get to leave or do i eat at the oh place? maybe maybe you stay at the venue if they've got good okay, food okay, not okay, every okay. venue does let's assume a regular venue then regular yeah. venue i think i'm a sandwich person oh yeah i'm a sandwich person it's so same. weird because and it's so weird because I keep my I have not officially been back, you know, I have in some capacity. Yeah. So handy things are gross to me right now. And so I'm yes. like, I don't want to eat the sandwich. Now you'll see me with a fork and a knife eating a sandwich. And they go, like, what is wrong with him? It's like, ah, I'm crazy now. Uh, let's go. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Because <laughs> people. Uh huh. I was just going to say, people will get at you for doing a knife and fork with pizza. So I can only imagine a sandwich. I knife and forked a, I, I, I host this little gig over at uh, Dave and Buster's on Sundays. Mm -hmm. I knife and forked a egg roll and I watched the freaking wait staff judge me for it. I ate though because I was so hungry because I'd been there for like three, three hours hosting. Yeah. And I was like, I am starving, but I have been fetching bean bags and handing footballs to people for three hours i'm going to eat but i'm not gonna do it without remembering that you know i want to keep my hands clean so i remember right. I, uh, uh not Venmo, what's the word uh, uh i sanitized my hands and mm -hmm. i ran to the bathroom and washed them but even mm -hmm. after all of that i was still like in my mind i was like ah. so i was like let me get this fork and knife and let me eat this food and i was sitting there and i could just see them out the corner of my eye looking at him like what's wrong with him why are you doing that uh -huh. you know 
I know the hand thing. I just I, I just did a show at a venue, uh, a great little bar in Toronto called right. Tonight. It's a oh. fantastic little joint. And oh, I right. I got popcorn with my with my soda. Okay. And um I hadn't eaten popcorn in public in like two years. And it was amazing how I was like, oh, I took a moment of like, should I do this? Like I was gonna, you know, run into traffic or something. It was so weird. Oh, you're like, oh, you appreciated it. You were like, oh, I forgot how this feels. It's weird. I've not yet been back to a movie theater to do the popcorn thing okay. at a movie theater, but it's strange. Yeah, like you mentioned, how you appreciate those yeah. small little snacks in public. I did it a few days ago. I went to the movies a few days mm -hmm. ago with my kiddos. And, uh, what did you it see? Was, it was uh, Venom. I went to see Venom. Ooh, and you ready nice. for this? Mm -hmm. I have not seen the first Venom. I hadn't. And neither did my kids either. And this was 100% their choice. And I was like, hey, just so you guys know, they're probably going to make references that we are not going to get. But you can still enjoy movies without being fully clued in, which I'm a firm yes. believer in that. So yes. we went and watched it. And I want to say that this isn't the first movie we've been through during the pandemic because I'm kind of luck, like I got luck at scoping out. OK, go early to this place that's really far north. There's not a lot For of people sure. there or go late to this place. And there's not a lot of people there because this movie has been out forever. So we've went to two other movie theaters during the pandemic. Okay. And literally, I'm talking one, we might have been the only people there. Another one, maybe a handful of people there, but everybody mm -hmm. was spaced out. This was yeah. the first movie that I had been to where I had people on my row, like not next to me, but like two, three seats over. So essentially next to you. And okay. then people were in front of us. And I was like, oh God, like for a split second, I was like, ah, you know, but yeah. It's a movie and you're here. And I was like, you know what? Let's just hope for the best and let's just, you know, everybody's being safe. No reason they're coughing yeah. and touching and rubbing on everything. But it was <laughs> early school from what I could see. That's a different kind of movie theater. <laughs> but at least from what I could see, what I could surmise, I didn't hear anybody or see anybody or smell anything. Please, but, mm -hmm. I what is there is there a family plan for getting the movie snacks? Because that shit can get expensive, at least here in Toronto. Do you guys do like everything? Do you just nothing? If people are watching this, this is going to be the grown portion of this. Let me, I'm going to finish, I'm going to table that, I'm going to finish the thought and I'm going to come okay. right back to this okay. answer. So the Marvel stuff, I got really into watching these Marvel movies with people. Like this was right before the pandemic, this was 2018, 2019, whatever. And mm -hmm. having the reactions of, I see what's on TV or on the screen, and then I have the same reaction as like a hundred plus people in the same room have <laughs> is one of the most powerful experiences next to going to a concert, I think. And it's cheaper. It's so true. It is the realest thing. And I was never into that until the Marvel stuff came out. And of yeah. course, you know, when you have the Infinity Wars and all these other things, right. going there and having that big experience is one of the most amazing things. And so that was something that I got a slight taste of watching mm -hmm. um, Venom. Uh, okay. this past weekend, which was great because nice. although it wasn't a lot of people necessarily in like the smallness, like we could feel each other, mm -hmm. it was where you could hear. And so when I laughed, they were laughing, etc. And so that was kind of cool to get back to. But now, oh. back here's the grown part mm -hmm. of this. <laughs> two kids. Now let's do the math, ladies and gentlemen. I have two kids and it's one of me. I'm an adult. Technically, yeah. my little girl who's now 13 okay. counts as an adult. My son, who was 10 at the time, was still a kid. I'm not proud of this. I spent 90 bucks at the movies for three of us. What? Let's, let's, I wish you could like, have somebody drop that in there because I'm about to drop the math on that. 90 bucks. I almost kept the receipt up until a few weeks ago just because I wanted to remember this. 90 bucks for a matinee. Here's what <laughs> happens. Here's what happens. I have my kiddos and although they aren't the same age, they do compete like twins. And so okay. they're okay. essentially twins, I tell you, because everything she can do, he can do. So she wants popcorn. He wants popcorn. Dad can't say no. Uh, she wants a pretzel thing. He wants a candy thing. Amazingly, the pretzel stuff and the candy stick cost about the same. Me seeing the pretzel thing going, I haven't eaten anything. I don't know when's the next time I'm going to eat. Let me go ahead and eat since we're sitting here for however long this movie is. I don't even remember what movie it was. I do remember what movie it was. Um, 
Suicide Squad. There's a whole okay. other there's a whole other problem with that. Anyway, <laughs> so I get something for me to eat. Well, you can't just eat. You got to drink too. So mm-hmm. I got myself a drink, and then I got them a drink that they could share, something like that. Ninety bucks, man. I looked up, and I had spent ninety bucks on a movie. Drum roll, ladies and gentlemen, that I could have watched at home on HBO Max. <laughs> ninety bucks. Ninety. <laughs> not ninety cents. Not nine dollars. Ninety dollars. Like nine zero. 10 away from 100. I spent that. And I don't even remember. I think it was later on that night, I just was cruising through HBO Max. And I was just like, yeah. oh, so, so that's one. Okay, it's the old one. No, it's the new one. I was like, no, but it, I got to pay for it though, right? And it was like, no, click. And I just clicked it and it started playing. And I was like, and my kids next to me was like, ooh. And I was like, yeah, ooh. Yeah. All right, well. But 90 bucks, Kelly. Well, I mean, I'm, I find that funny. I laugh in sympathy, not at you. But when I think about it, you're going with a couple of kids. You're going to rack up the bills. Like whether or not you're at a ballpark or a movie theater, Facts. that is an event, you know? dollars though. Yeah. Uh, I was just like, we could have stole food and snuck it in. And I could have got a ticket for like doing something illegal. And I don't think it would have cost it 90 bucks. Amazing how people sneak food in uh, to, to a venue. I I used to usher at a theater in Toronto that would occasionally uh, be a host for the Toronto International Film Festival. Yeah. And there's you know a specific rule: you can only have food from the venue. You can't bring right. anything in. Right. And when I would be doing like ushering for the morning screenings, it always blew my mind that when we were cleaning up afterwards, there were bags of McDonald's because. Holy <laughs> Because holy fuck, you can smell a McDonald's bag from a mile away. You know what like, it is. How did we not catch that person? And it's during a festival? During a festival. It yeah. just, mm-hmm. I, I don't awesome. know, because you can smell a McDonald's fry. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, oh, we don't make that. Yeah. We don't even make potato products except chips, but we don't make those. I just, hmm. I never. What do you do? What do you do if you catch the person? I'm curious since you were, the, you say you're an usher. Do you walk up and say, hey, I'm sorry, I got to confiscate that? Or You ask them to eat it in the lobby or you throw it away. You take it from them, Kelly? You're like a TSA agent, man. Oh You're just shook. God, that's horrible. Oh, so that'll be mid-burger eating and just going. Buddy, <laughs> look at Yeah. <laughs> Pre-pandemic is like mine. Post-pandemic is like, yeah, throw that away. <laughs> oh Don't touch it. Yeah, it's, yeah, the, the whole thing's changed. I Life's changed. I know. I know. Life, life has changed. But the, the eating popcorn in public thing was a big one. I miss being at the ballpark this year because the Toronto Blue Jays just came back at the end of their season. I'm a big baseball fan. Okay. Um, the Raptors are back, though. And hey. got, we've got people in the stands. We just had uh, the first concert indoors in Toronto. Oh, okay. Ricky Martin came to town. Oh, Mr. Living La Vida Loca. Yeah. He is still out there. That's so cool. What's the venue for y'all? What is that uh, indoor venue? Uh, that concert happened at Scotiabank Arena, which is right the downtown. Basketball? Is that the basketball? That's place? the basketball venue. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, I think just talking to people and finding out about what makes them happy about their locale. And so you talking about the sports and stuff, that's like, mm-hmm. that's uh, music to my ears. Because wait, so where are you stand on this? Because I know that you were, you've been traveling. Are you going to go? Are you going to wait it out? Or... I, I started traveling uh, two months ago. It's crazy. I just looked at the calendar. I was like, that was two months ago. I was I in saw California. You post it on. I was so happy for you. So are you uh, go to the big venues and, and like, or is it outside or is it, I'm still going to wait it out? Like, where do you stand on that? I am now doing things as smartly and as safely as I possibly can. I'm okay. not going out every night, okay. but I am going out and just... Uh, just trying to re, re like re, reacclimate, I guess yeah. reacclimate uh, to to life prior. Like a couple, about a week ago, I had rest, I had dinner inside a restaurant in Toronto for the first time in God knows how long. Mm-hmm. And I'll be honest, it kind of freaked me out. But I feel like as much as we learned how to transition away from people, and I was rocking this solo for 
a good portion of the pandemic. Um, now we sort of have to figure out how to go back. And it's this weird, like, oh, how do I, how do yeah. I go back to the reality? Um, with the kiddos, were you guys like chowing down on a lot of comfort food to get you through the past yeah. year and a half? Yes, it was, was comfort food. It was, mm -hmm. man, it was everything you could think of that probably two years ago, we were like, you shouldn't be eating a lot of this. Yeah. And it was just like, <laughs> let's do it. You know, like, hey, what do you want? Okay, let's go get it. I mean, it's, I hate to say it, but I'm gonna keep it real. I'm not gonna, you know, yeah. circle the shit. Uh, Oh, you don't want this fast food restaurant? Okay, but you do. Fine, we'll go to this fast food restaurant for you, and we'll go to this fast food restaurant for you. And mm -hmm. hell, if dad doesn't want either, we may go to a third one, you know? So we were, you know, just trying to keep it, you know, we're a split household, and so my mm -hmm. kiddos live with their mom in okay. a different um, town, like it's the town over, not too far. Okay. And so my thing was, when I had them, I wanted to keep things as comfortable as possible. I didn't want to hit them with so much, you know, the regulations and jumping on them. I mean, there are certain things that I couldn't part ways. I was like, hey, my son, he's a very handsy person. So I was like, hey, hey, don't <laughs> go around touching every damn thing, you know? And so yes. that was a little stuff like that. We're constantly cleaning hands, washing, sanitizing, all of that. Mm -hmm. But like when it came to food, man, it was just like, I got to a point where I was like, hey, what do y'all want to eat tonight? Okay, that's what we're going to eat. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a, hey, we're going to do this, do that, you know? And yeah. uh. That's true. I think we did okay. I was trying my best to look out more for as crazy as to say their mental health. I wasn't yeah. really like like I was like, yo, it's it's a screwed up world right now. Everything is backwards. They're barely able to be around people and friends. Yeah. I said my job is when they're here to make it as cool and chill as possible. I don't yeah. want them to have to deal with a lot of, you know, uh pushback on stuff that they want. And so we made it yeah. work. Um and I was traveling a lot to go do shows. And so that okay. stopped. And so my, mm -hmm. a little bit of my peace came from being on the road. So I just started driving. I got here in Texas, mm -hmm. we have a lot of long, windy back roads mm -hmm. and stuff. And so I just got in the car and it would just go for these long, I'm talking three hours one way and then having to drive another three hours back home down a country road just to kind of yeah. calm myself down. I was telling people, I, I realized that the more, uh in my nerves that I was mm -hmm. the longer the trip was and I wouldn't realize sure. it. I would just be driving and then all of a sudden I'd love to just pull over at a gas station and I would pull my GPS up and I would see how far away how far away I was from home yeah. and I was like oh my god I've been driving for two hours I'm two hours away you know <laughs> but I was seeing different parts of it and so that was yeah. part of me kind of keeping my sanity so I think with the kids part of me keeping them calm mm -hmm. was like yo Whatever food you want, I'm going to try to get that for y'all within yeah. reason. And yeah. even, Dad, I want to go get some ice cream and eat it and add sprinkles. Let's mm -hmm. do it. You know, like, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and tell you, no, if I don't have to. Like, the first yeah. time that I ordered uh, pizza, I felt comfortable enough to order something from that I had not made. I will, I'm, without a word of a lie, I almost hugged the the oh, pizza guy <laughs> it's just like a person yeah <laughs> domino's pizza came to my rescue so many times over this past year and a half i am um, like a lot of people uh i was you know doing the online dating thing and i had set up like a zoom wine and pizza date with uh -huh. this guy he mm -hmm. never called in so i was in my kitchen staring at a zoom screen by myself it was like the saddest thing ever. It was like a French film, just black and white, just super sad. <laughs> this girl yeah, alone yeah. in her kitchen. Yeah. And I tweeted that I was going to order a pizza because I got stood up. And Domino's Canada tweeted me back and said, we're paying for your pizza. Oh, good job. Yay, Kudos Domino's. Could have their social media department for that. That's, <laughs> that's sad. That's so sad, sad, but at the same time, it's a thing where it's part of reality. Because I mean, yeah, that happens in real life, and because yeah. I'm a horrible person, would it have been worse if it had been in person, or do you think it was worse because it was Zoom? I think it was pretty fucking sad to be staring at a screen like, when's he gonna call? I hear was, you. I just I, I look at that. Sad. I look at that as the positive because I've told people this with comedy. I love 
having a bad set on Zoom because as soon as it's over, I can lay down in my bed and hide from the world the moment it's over. I can run to the bathroom 50 times and nobody even knows. They just know my screen is not active. Whereas in person, if I saw I got to stay there and then sit in it. Or I at least got to, hey, bye. (laughs) Hey, yeah, me, the guy that bummed. (laughs) You know, the guy that sucked, that's me. <laughs> or you have those moments where you're standing around people who did great, and the yeah. audience is like talking to the guy on your left yep. and the guy on your right. Amazing show, fantastic show. Nice to see you. <laughs> hey, hey, you, can you take a picture of me and this great comic that was awesome? Yeah, you guy that stinks, that reeks of failure. Can you take a picture of me and this comic that doesn't stink and reek of failure, please? I was telling him about how... Uh, I like the artificial flavor of watermelon, strawberry, oh. and grape. I don't know what the hell those flavors are, because if you've had a strawberry, a watermelon, or a grape in real life, yeah, they don't taste anything like strawberry soda, watermelon soda, or grape soda. But the artificial flavor is amazing. I was like, wow. you go right now and find a purple grape. I will challenge anybody out there. <laughs> I'm talking about when you open the damn thing up, it's purple. <laughs> and, it, and you squeeze it and the juice comes out purple. I don't know who <laughs> trick, tricked us in thinking that grapes were purple, that the, the juice was going to be purple. It's like, it's huh. pink, it's red, it's a little bit, you know, here and there, that well, wine. I was like, yeah, but when you squeeze it, you got all this other stuff. It's, it's like a dark, like brown, red is bloody looking thing. But that purple, I'm talking about that purple that you got on that little bookshelf or yeah, yeah. No, no, that's the color yeah. and that's the flavor. When black people say what flavor of Kool-Aid do you like? And we say purple, people be like, you mean grape? Mm-mm, that ain't grape. That is purple. What does purple look like? That purple tastes and it looks like it tastes. It looks like it tastes and it tastes like it looks. Purple. Um yes. they yes. have this campaign yeah. right now, and every few years this stuff happens. And it yeah. freaks me out more and more. Uh, Burger King is like, we just got rid of 120 artificial ingredients from our menu. And I'm just like, wait a minute, hold up. Yeah. So a hamburger is hamburger, bread, maybe some sesame seeds on it, some salt, yeah. maybe a little bit of butter. That's like five things, cheese and mayonnaise. Where yeah. the hell are the other 113 things coming from? We got rid of 130... 100, what is this, 120 artificial ingredients. And you're just trying to figure out, wait, y'all burgers and everything still looks the same. What the <laughs> hell have y'all been pumping us up? Because this is what, 2021? This is what everybody walking around has had a Burger King something. So what have they been putting in us? 120, Kelly? Oh, oh, uh, a lot of a lot of stuff we don't want to know because you don't want to know it's in the bread. No. Like, like think of like the whole Subway thing where they oh, had to admit Carpet. That that's not tuna, and that's like no. the bread. I believe the bread is almost at the same level as like a plastic yoga mat. Like it's, what? it's, it's just not Subway eat fresh. I would put in quotes. I fell for it. I fell for it because I was gonna lie. I'd be like, you know what? I could, I could do something healthy. You know, with Subway, I says fresh. Fresh is in the name. What's yeah, the alternative is. to eating fresh though? Like, what is the alternative? Like, they just say McDonald's had a campaign about fresh fruit. And I was like, what the hell is the alternative, though? What have y'all been giving us before? Every year, and we don't even question it. We just like, oh, my God, it's new. It's a fresh fruit smoothie. What is the alternative, ladies and gentlemen? Like, I guess it's <laughs> it's, it's flavoring. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Not great. Purple. What do you got on this smoothie? I want uh, let a me get, purple let me, smoothie. Let me get purple in that. <laughs> let me get a uh, watermelon with no seeds in that one. Yeah, let me get those flavors. <laughs> Let me get um, red strawberry, <laughs> or yeah. blue strawberry. Let me get a blue strawberry smoothie, please. I I once ordered a salad at McDonald's, and I remember oh. my friend Paul asked me just straight up. He's like, "Why? Why? Why did you do this?" Because <laughs> the fact is, it's got as much calories just based on the dressing as a yeah. Big Mac. The Wendy's you're not doing that. yourself any favors. You just That's awesome. <laughs> Um, just before I let you go, friend, uh, yeah. an important question is, and, and I've, I've been asking this a bit lately of, of my friends, is a hot dog a sandwich? All right, let's see. I've answered this question a lot. The normal answer I give, it depends on how you hold it uh, slash eat it. But huh. 
Yeah, it, it, because okay, so here's the thing: sandwiches. You don't hold a sandwich side. Well, all right, let's let's preface this with normal people, okay? Because they're like, well, you don't know. My uncle had his hand with like that. That's the way he could eat like this. But normal people, not I'm not being ableist, by the way. That was a very off-color joke, ladies and gentlemen. This is all humor and the guise of humor. Um, but depending on how you hold it. So I think if you hold a hot dog sideways, which I do know some people will and eat it like that, then that could be a sandwich of sorts. But what is the alternative? So if it's not a sandwich, then it is a what? I am of the opinion that mm -hmm. a hot dog is kind of a hybrid of a sandwich and not a sandwich. It's, it's a hot dog. I, it's it's its own like, thing? Okay. I think it's its own thing. It's its own sovereign nation. Okay. Okay. Hmm. I I mean I get the 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 idea. Um, but I had heard from one person that because yeah. the bread doesn't separate, that does not make it a sandwich. Because the bread's see, attached. You ain't never been poor though, man. That's what, see, that's <laughs> this experiential. You ain't never had them the, you get the wrong bun company sometimes it's just you oh, open it too much so and by the time you didn't did everything the damn thing was split open and it's halfway through and then it's just sitting on the plate and you just got to pick it up and deal with it because i've done that and also mm -hmm. i've eaten hot dogs with just bread just being real i've eaten hot dog with a bread i've eaten hot dogs with a hamburger bun i took the hamburger yeah. bun i smashed <laughs> together i have literally yeah. forked I forked the knife to a chili dog because I was trying not to get dirty. I've done all of that, okay? <laughs> this oh is what God. we do. This I love it. Do. That's yeah. a perfect spot to end it. Yeah.